Hi, 안녕하세요. 니하오, kia ora. My name is Tina Wang and I'm a senior associate at Queen City Law. I'm also the property team leader and today I will be talking to you about the 10 common pitfalls of a purchaser when purchasing real estate in New Zealand. Now let's get straight into it. Number one, read the agreement. Take the time to read through all the relevant sections and conditions. Seek legal advice before you sign the contract because once you sign, it is legally binding. GST. Now check whether the price is plus GST or inclusive of GST. This may be relevant if the property has a taxable activity or is in a hotel pool. Also, you might think that it's completely irrelevant to me because I'm just buying a residential property. We have seen people caught out because they thought they were buying a property where GST was not affected, but it was. Number three, tenancy. If you are purchasing subject to tenancy, you should look at the tenancy agreement. We have seen people think that they're getting a fixed term contract when in fact it was periodic or a different rent amount. So check the agreement and check that the bond has been put into the tenancy services bond center. Finance. Bank pre-approvals are often generic and not specific to a property. So while they may have approved you generically to uh, finance a certain amount, it might not apply to the specific property you are about to purchase. So make sure that the bank is okay to finance you for that particular property before you take out the finance condition. Number five, warranties are not the same as conditions. Warranties mean that a vendor warrants to do something before settlement, and if they don't do it, it does not give you a right of cancellation. A condition, however, makes the agreement conditional upon something happening and if that condition is not satisfied you have a right to cancellation so one gives right to a cancellation the other does not chattels list ensure the chattel is correctly listed you might find that actually that sparkle was not included uh, if the property excludes certain things on the chattel list but you have a verbal arrangement it will not hold out real estate agents and representations made the real estate agent acts for the vendor and they are the vendor's agent. There are some misnomer, misnomers from uh, people from say Asian countries where they believe that the real estate agent is the purchaser's agent. No, they act for the vendor. Number eight, cladding and monolithic walls, leaky buildings. That is not something that you like to hear but New Zealand has a leaky building crisis. So that monolithic cladding style of house that you like might actually cause you headaches. So if you look to the screen, this is a typical traits of a leaky building property. So if you look at certain uh, points about, for instance, the flat roof or the head flashings over the windows, the cladding uh, being too close to the ground or the decks covering the top of the room, uh, the, the rooms or hard fixed pergolas, uh, those are common traits of a leaky building, so watch out for them, get a building report. Number nine, pre-purchase inspection. All purchases, unless the property is tenanted, has a right to a final inspection before settlement. So after you sign the contract, after it goes unconditional, and before settlement, you have a right to check that the property is in order. And at that time, you are looking to make sure that the property is in the same state it was when you signed the agreement. So prior to checking, ensure uh, that you've got the chattels list and make sure that it's all in order and you are buying what you contracted for. Lastly, insurance. It is the purchaser's obligation to organise insurance unless it's body corporate, so pay special attention to uh, whether it covers earthquakes and what amount um, the insurance covers you for because unlike old times, prior to the uh, Christchurch earthquakes, they're not going to give you all, all uh, covering insurance. There's going to be a specific amount that they cover you for and it has to be enough to basically replace and rebuild the house if something was to happen. So with that in mind, please feel free to contact me or my team if you have any queries whatsoever and please contact us before you sign the contract. Good luck. Thank you.